Ipsa, please uh, stop sharing. You need to start recording also. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, just confirming that only. Okay. Ipsa, is recording on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good evening, honorable speakers, dear colleagues, and my dear students. On behalf of Physithon Society, Department of Physics, Kalindi College, I, Dr. Triranjita Srivastava, present a warm welcome to everyone at an international webinar on gender, culture, and everyday experience. Physithon Society every year organizes lectures, workshops, paper presentations, and many other events for the overall growth and development of the students. It provides a very effective platform for overall development of the students. These activities help the students to groom their communication and presentation skills, which are very essential in the present world. With these words, I invite the convener of the Physiton Society, Dr. Seema Gupta, to formally announce the commencement of this webinar. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Trendika. Good evening. Honorable guest, Mr. Shivda Sharma, Ms. Nandita Datta, my colleagues and dear students. I welcome you all at the International Seminar on Gender, Culture and the Everyday Experience. Gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. We all need to unite around a common cause as set out in the principles of the equality for all and make this webinar a moment of real acceleration, change, and accountability. I'm grateful to our speakers, Mr. Shivdar Sharma, who is associated with the Department of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies in USA, and Ms. Nandita Datta, working with the School of Oriental and African Studies, University College London, who agreed to be part of this webinar and sensitize our students on gender culture. This webinar is the result of constant hard work of program coordinator, Dr. Savita Sharma, co-conveners, Dr. Rashmi Manan, Dr. Tri Ranjita Shirvastva, the student office bearers of Physithon Society and the support of my physics faculty. We are grateful to our principal, Professor Nana Sija, with us, um, who is always guiding us with her innovative ideas and constant support. She has conveyed her best wishes for this event. Now I ask Program Coordinator, Dr. Savita Sharma, to introduce the speakers. Savita, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome today. Myself, Dr. Savita Sharma from Physics Department, Kalanthi College, feels immense pleasure in introducing today's speakers, Mr. Shivdat Sharma and Ms. Nandita Datta. Welcome you both. Shivdat Sharma is a founding member of the Center for Studies in Gender and Sexuality at Ashoka University and is currently pursuing a PhD in Gender Studies at Emory University, Atlanta, USA. He is also a past recipient of the prestigious Fulbright Nehru Scholarship and holds a master degree in history. Welcome, Shivdat. Nandita is the author of a first of its kind book, F Rated, Being a Woman Filmmaker in India. She is currently pursuing a PhD in Gender and Sexuality Studies at University College London. She holds a master's in Gender Studies from the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London, where she was a Shivaning scholar. Thank you very much, Shiva Nandita, for being with us today. Over to you both now. 
Thank you, Dr. Gupta, Dr. Srivastava, and Dr. Sharma for your warm introductions. I once again just want to thank all of you, Professor Nayana Hasija, the principal of the Kalandi College, Dr. Seema Gupta, the convener of this um, uh, program, Dr. Savita Sharma and Dr. Tiranjana, Tiranjita Srivastava and other colleagues at Kalandi College for organizing this, what we all hope, we believe, is an important conversation to be had even on an evening, which otherwise would be wasted otherwise. Uh, Nandita, over to you. Maybe you can begin us off. Uh, you're, you're muted, Nandita. Of course. It happens at the start of every webinar. So I'll just share my screen. And uh, we, have, we do have a PowerPoint, and we will talk you through certain concepts, certain things. But most importantly, I want to mention that this is not a lecture. So we are not here to really, you know, like kind of pass on the knowledge that we have to you, but it's more, we hope it will be more of a collaborative session where we all will participate together and by the end of it, you know, learn something from each other. And to that end, I think we would really appreciate if you can turn your cameras on. If you cannot, due to any reason, that's understandable. But if you can, please turn your cameras on because it's really nice to be able to see who is at the other side to be able to interact with you. And this is more like a workshop. So it only works if we hear from you, if you participate, if you interact with us. And as I said before, it's the aim is to learn together something at the end of the session. And uh, I would also actually appreciate, we would, Shiv and I would appreciate if we know there are many professors present here today, if they can also participate in this discussion, that would be great. So with that, I will just try sharing my screen and hope that works. Uh, is the PowerPoint visible? Yes, yes. Perfect. Uh, Shiv, do you want to say some words about this slide? So just as Nandita said, we'd really like you all to participate. Um, don't hold back whenever we are having discussions. Feel free to speak your opinions, what your thoughts are. But with that, we just want to say to everyone, maintain confidenti confidentiality. Don't worry that, you know, this is, I know this is live on YouTube as well. But this, this is really a collaborative knowledge production that we're doing here. We encourage you to participate enthusiastically. Um, and as Nandita already said, try to keep your videos on so that we feel encouraged as speakers so that we're not speaking to boxes. So great. Yeah. Shiv? Uh, okay, so before we begin off on thinking about some of the basics of what gender is, what is gender equality, what, what are these various terms that we use when we talk about gender. We thought maybe we could start off with a little bit of exercise. You have a box before you. And Nandita, if you could zoom in a little bit, maybe it would be more readable. You have a number of quotes, number of sentences, lines, statements written on this, this one screen, these 12 boxes that are there. Sorry, 16 boxes. Um, we'd love to hear if, you know, any of you can begin speaking, if you've heard these things before, if you have heard them before, in what contexts, how are these things being said, to who are these being things being said to, said whenever they are said. So anybody if could start us off by thinking about any of these statements, any of these 16 statements. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure these are many of the statements that you encounter in your everyday life. So we'd love to hear if anybody would like to speak about that. We'll wait a couple of minutes. Boys will be boys. ko dard nahi hota. And there are many statements I'm pretty sure you've, if you've not heard around you, maybe you've heard on TV or in films. What do you think? Do 
take a moment to go through what's there on the slide and just if you want to say anything you have encountered these statements somebody has said this to you you've heard it in a film or advertisement anything that comes to your mind Yes, ma'am. We listen these two statements. Mard ko dard ni hota. A man does not feel pain, and we also mm -hmm. listen. Grow a pair. Man up, be a man. Okay, Sakshi, uh, do you want to tell us in what context? मतलब क्यों बोला जाता है ऐसा? कहाँ सुना है आपने? किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में सुना है? Ma'am, can I use Hindi? Yes, of course. मैम अगर कोई चोट लग जाती है किसी भी लड़के को या फिर किसी भी पर्सन को मतलब मेल मेल पर्सन को तो उसको कहते हैं कि आपको रोना नहीं चाहिए आपको दर्द नहीं होगा और फीमेल है तो आप रो सकते हो आपको दर्द होता है इस टाइप से मतलब ये समझते हैं कि अगर मैन है तो मैन ही स्ट्रोंग हो सकता है वुमेन स्ट्रोंग नहीं हो सकती थैंक यू सो मच साक्षी दिस इज दिस इज वंडरफुल टू बिगिन विद राइट इसका मतलब क्या है कि इवन वेन मैं थिंकिंग अबाउट एवरीडे थिंग्स सच एज किसी को चोट लग गया कोई गिर गया वट एवर देर इज अ क्लियर डिमार्केशन बिटवीन हाउ अ मैन शुड रिएक्ट टू दैट वर्सेज हाउ अ वुमन शुड रिएक्ट टू दैट राइट सो वी ऑटोमेटिकली एज्यूम सम हाउ वुमेन विल क्राई गॉड दे फील सो मच पेन मैन सम हाउ डोंट नीड टू क्राई दे इनफैक्ट शुड नॉट क्राई इन ऑर्डर टू बी प्रॉपर मैन सो दैट वॉज गुड थैंक यू सो मच साक्षी What else? Anybody else who'd like to pick up, pick up on some other statement? Talk about. It. Yes, sir. Sir, I want to um, say, uh, sir, hasi to fasi. Uh, like I'm people sorry. used to say, if a woman is bold and she talks to a boy, she is more familiar to boys. Like there are some girls who have nature like that, bold nature. She talks to everyone, smiling and happily. But the people comment that. Hasi to fasi, like the girl should not even smile or talk to a person like smilingly. कि हंस के बात करो तो वो चीज भी गलत हो जाती है. So it should not be that. मतलब वो ही society के expectations होती है ना श्वेता की मतलब अगर एक proper लड़की को किस तरह behave करना चाहिए एक proper लड़की को किस तरह behave करना चाहिए. So thank you. That's a that's a great point that goes on to show what we are going to kind of. Some of the concepts that we are going to explain later, and just to like uh, just add to that, so it's interesting. It's not simply about individual men and women's behaviors. There's also an ideal that is created, a expected ideal of a proper man or a proper woman, right? And we are all asked to always live up to that ideal. कि अच्छा अच्छी लड़कियाँ अच्छे घर की लड़कियाँ ऐसे हँसती नहीं हैं आसानी से ऐसे नहीं करती हैं public में and if you do that you're not that proper woman that you should be similarly there are codes set for proper men and how they should behave in public etc so what else quickly anybody else who wants um, to can i yeah yes ma'am uh, uh, ma'am i'll go with sentence number 8 like bro mm -hmm. this uh, his room is always neat and uh, neat and tidy like a girl it's usually said when a guy is like neat freak or like he is living like a noble human being his friends always say ki like itna saaf tu ladkiyan rakhti hai tum itna saaf kaise rakh sakte ho like i you straight matlab ki gen gender pe aapne kuch nahi utha diya ki if he lives in a neat and proper place does that mean he is not straight or is he gay or something like that yeah. that thank you so much parul that's a, that's a very interesting one right and you keep seeing again these are simple basic etiquettes right thinking about it ki yes, yes. normal human exactly etiquette. as you said parul ki any adult person who is not any more a child should keep their things clean etc right but it's funny how in the society even that's a gendered phenomenon right ki अच्छा लड़कियां इस तरह से क्लीन रखती हैं लड़के तो ऐसे ही रहते हैं हमेशा यू नो एंड यू कैन आल्सो हियर ऑलमोस्ट दिस स्टेटमेंट टेन हियर बॉयज विल बी बॉयज लड़कों का तो रूम ऐसे ही रहता है राइट व्हाट व्हाट वी आल्सो यू नो इम्प्लिसिटली व्हाट वी आल्सो से वाइल सेइंग सच थिंग्स इज 
there is a way to be a woman there is a way to be a man and these should not overlap a man or man cannot behave in womanly manner similarly a woman should not behave in a manly manner so if a woman is keeping their you know room very unclean that's a very bad thing are ye kaise kar rahe ho tum so we know that even in these everyday experiences we are talking about very specific things about being a man or a woman hmm and if i may on that note go on to our next slide so as shiv said you know like a man should behave in a particular manner a woman should behave in a particular manner but is that something that comes from our biology is that does that come from being born um, as male or being born as female like do you think there's anything natural or biological about how men and behave, women are expected to behave just a quick yes or no would be fine no 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 okay okay great so see this is where when we formally study gender what is gender what is sex this is the kind of distinction we make in order to understand right so as soon as a baby is born like the first question parents would ask the doctor or the doctor is expected to tell the parents is ki ladka hai ya ladki hai hai na we all operate in terms of these binaries that when a person is born they can only be a boy or a girl and as soon as one you know comes on this planet we like to fix their identity as either a male or a female and that is biological sex of a person i mean that does depend on certain if you look at the the who definition then sex is biologically defined in terms of you know like the chromosomal characteristics xx has had to female xy had to male the hormonal makeup of that person the reproductive organs that they are born with so that is that is you can call biological sex but then what is gender right gender doesn't have to be the same as biological sex gender is something that is socially constructed gender is how the society tells us we are supposed to behave as men as women what are the different norms that we have to follow of the society what are the different roles that are subscribed to our identities based on our sex so you can be let's assume for a, for a minute that you can be born as either male or female but there's nothing natural about the way you're supposed to behave as men and women that is what society teaches us and which is why you know it's not fixed it can change from society to society in india there might be different rules of being a proper woman those same rules might not apply in say the usa right so the rules of being a man or a woman are also different in different societies they also change in from time to time what we understood to be proper womanly behavior in the 1970s might not be the same as what we understand of it now so these are social historical concepts that are very very contextual to the society that we are trying to study okay so i just wanted to leave you with this picture so is it is it difficult for us to say which one is a man which one is a woman though we don't see their faces or we don't see any identifying characteristics as such that we can instantly point out that one is a man and one is a woman right based on what based on the setting the way the setting position so does that make a bit clear to you what i'm trying to say about gender नहीं ऐसा तो है नहीं कि भाई लड़कियां मतलब ऐसे नहीं बैठ सकती जैसे वो आदमी बैठा हुआ है बट हमें सिखाया जाता है राइट कि अगर आप लड़की है अगर आप एक औरत है महिला है तो यू सिट लेडी लाइक दिस इज हाउ यू बिहेव यू क्रॉस योर लेग्स वाइल मेन आर मोर काइंड ऑफ देर टॉट फ्रॉम अ वेरी यंग एज टू बी मोर फ्री विद देर बॉडीज सो यू नो दे डोंट देर नॉट सो कॉन्शियस अबाउट वेयर देर लेग्स आर गोइंग हाउ मच स्पेस दे आर टेकिंग अप देर ऑल्सो टॉट टू टेक अप मोर स्पेस वाइल एज वेमेन वी आर टॉट टू टेक अप लेसर स्पेस so this image kind of like struck me as a very a very striking example of you know what gender is like how from the moment we are born we are trained to be proper men and proper women okay now a quick exercise so based on what we have talked so far based on also your personal experiences your observations can you like list traits that you think are manly and traits that are girly 
loud voice is really uh, related to Nan's voice. Sorry, if you are speaking up, can you say your name and then speak up so we know who's talking? My name is Sonia. Sonia, yes. So, so I, I think Sonia. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. So I was saying that loud voice is usually relevant to man's voice, and it is usually considered to be related to man's voice. Yes. It's not really a good trait for women, at least according to the society. and women are soft spoken exactly yeah. and that's interesting sorry just quickly i want to say something on that is it's interesting how you said loud voice is sonia because it's not simply about right. deep voice right we we can clearly biologically say that women have not so deep voice men have deeper huskier voice but that's not to say anything about loudness loudness is definitely a socially ascribed characteristic right that women should not speak up too much wouldn't women should not shout whereas men are encouraged to speak loudly boldly assertively etc so that's great any other thing that comes to anybody's mind मैम वो मैन सार लेस मतलब औरतों को ये समझा जाता है कि वो कम इकोनॉमिकल है उस टाइप की चीजें कम कर सकती है उस टाइप से मैथमेटिकल कैलकुलेशंस कम कर सकती है मैन इसमें फास्ट होते हैं वो जल्दी कर पाते हैं ये भी एक बहुत प्रेवलेंस स्टेरियो टाइप है सोसाइटी में कि जो लड़के हैं वो मैथ्स साइंस में अच्छे होते हैं जबकि यू नो आर्ट्स ह्यूमैनिटीज मतलब आर्ट्स और ह्यूमैनिटीज कौन पढ़ता है लड़कियां पढ़ती है क्योंकि वैसे भी उसमें कोई करियर तो है नहीं तो बचपन से ये वैल्यूज होती है ना जो हमें बिल्कुल मतलब ड्रिल कर दी जाती है and it's so and it's so interesting for us today because as we saw from the introductions itself all these professors who gave the inter- introduction were physics professors who are teaching sciences so we clearly know that there is nothing natural about women not being able to study sciences in fact they can in fact they can excel very much but we assume socially often that oh mathematics to bas ki nahi hai ladkiyon ke and so on. anything else men are supposed to have a good muscles as compared to women they are not seen as a girl should not have a muscle mm-hmm. absolutely jashi says ki men are expected to be muscular women on the other hand are expected to be leaner slimmer thinner and i, I guess nandita will talk about this in a slide very soon but it's inter- it's a very good example jashree because also we know there are women like pt usha who can actually have muscle so to say but there is something again about how we raise women versus how we raise boys boys are encouraged to go to gym walk exercise whereas women there is a lot more focus on let's say domestic work learning how to make rotis properly or whatever it is so even when we think about whether it's really a biological capability you clearly see that there is a much more of how babies are raised and depending on that whether one has more muscles or not yeah should be any other quick points if not i move on i think one of the thing that is considered manly or girlish is how an individual expresses his emotion like if a man can show his emotion freely he is considered not so manly but on the other hand if a female Does not show her emotion. She is considered as an emotionless person. Yeah, uh, Krishpi. Yeah, that's I think a very great point. Like men are expected to bottle up their feelings, to not be emotional, to not express their sentiments. While with women, it's just the expectation, right? So if you don't cry enough, then you don't leave to patthar dilay or something like that. You know, like औरत होके कैसे emotions नहीं हैं इसके. That's very true. So exactly, and that brings me to the next uh, concept, which is gender roles, right? So what does that mean? Like, based on our gender, based on whether we are raised to be men or women, we are expected to act, speak, dress, behave, conduct ourselves in certain ways, right? And this can be with regards to our personality traits, as a lot of you mentioned. You know, women are emotional, men are aggressive. so that's a stereotype that's a personality based stereotype then it can be related to domestic behavior 
कि भाई घर पे जो कुकिंग क्लीनिंग सारे हाउस होल्ड चोर्स है दैट्स वेमेन्स जॉब वाइल men you know they'll probably do the shopping or they'll fix something if the bulb is a bulb needs changing or something needs fixing that's the men's job we also see it in professional lives right because as somebody said science and mathematics are considered to be subjects that males excel in while women are seen to be more kind of excelling in you know arts and humanities which then goes on to reflect in professional lives like women take up professions that have peculiarly or society which the values of society considers to be feminine values so women become teachers nurses uh, domestic workers while men become doctors engineers pilots so it's like a continuation right of what begins at childhood and then goes on through your entire lifespan there's never a stop date as to when you become a proper man or a proper woman all your life you are taught or you're expected by the society to behave in certain ways it also as uh, one of you as jeshri said it also kind of uh, applies to physical appearance that you know if you are a woman then you can have long hair you can wear makeup men if they have long hair and if god forbid if a man wants to wear lipstick or kajal that would i mean that would seem so odd to all of us right because even physically there are expectations of you in society So now the question is so how do we learn these gender roles like who is it in the society that teaches us because we have been talking about society telling us how to become a proper man or a proper woman but who is it in the society that does this job so this job of socialization and by socialization i mean the process through which we as individuals start learning how the society what the society expects of us and this job really begins in our childhood it starts with our parents you know them reinforcing what is good behavior what is bad behavior so there is research that proves that you know parents at a very early age start reinforcing that you know if boys if they throw tantrums parents listen to them while girls parents always reinforce gentle behavior they don't encourage tantrums and this i'm talking about concrete research that has been conducted with children so children just kind of absorb this message right that as a boy you can be entitled you can you can throw a tantrum if you don't get what you want but as a girl you'll only get it if you're polite if you're soft spoken if you're gentle and then as you go along through your life as you move along through your life the same is reinforced by your teachers by your friends by the media messaging by the films you watch by the advertisements you watch by the books you read everything around you is reinforcing what is expected of you as a man or a woman and this kind of as i said before you know this process never really stops it begins at birth and it continues all through your life so you know now this is something that's getting increasingly trendier right gender reveal party matlab already paida hone ke pehle you want to box a child into whether it's a girl or a boy girl hai to bhai usko sari pink cheeze pasand hongi boy hai to blue cheeze pasand hongi so even before i mean i said it starts at birth but nowadays even before the child is born you already want to kind of categorize them into a girl who will like specific kind of things or a boy who will like specific kind of things and these are actual pictures from a toy shop in london here right i mean you would think maybe things are a bit different here western society metropolis but no so this is like you see the boys toy section and there are like cars and um, different kind of games and then the science section is interest into it so boys the already it's setting the expectation that if you're a boy you'll be interested in science you'll be interested in scientific toys while if you see the girl section it's pink there are all these cuddly teddy bears there are barbie dolls makeup things home things arts and crafts so it's already setting the expectation that if you're a girl then you'll probably you know you, how can you like science how can you like like a uh, the doctor's blanket you should like all these cuddly soft toys so it's also you know marketing how constantly products and services are marketed to us as men and women Okay another reflection exercise so 
Think about your own gendered experience, the way you have been gendered as men and women. And think about the fact that, you know, have there been instances when you have wanted to do something or you've been or you have wanted to be a certain way which you were discouraged from because why tum ladki ho log kya kahenge ya tum ladke ho log kya kahenge like have there been such experiences in your life and we hope you're all thinking reflecting on your own selves that's more important but yes if somebody would like to speak up that be great so that we can all learn from that बोलते हैं कि मतलब तुम लड़की हो तो तुम रात को बाहर नहीं जा सकते और मतलब बॉय हो तो तुम कितनी भी रात तक घूम सकते हो तुम्हें दस बजे से पहले पहले अंदर आना है वरना लोग क्या कहेंगे सोसाइटी क्या बोलेगी हमारे ऐसा मतलब एक्सपीरियंस होता है काफी बार बिल्कुल संजना बिल्कुल सही है मतलब अगर आप लड़की हो तो हर चीज आपकी सेफ्टी के बारे में बना दी जाती है राइट आपको सेफ रहना है तो आप घर से बाहर ना निकले लड़कों को कोई नहीं पूछता कि भाई कब घर आ रहे हो किसके साथ जा रहे हो क्या कर रहे हो वी आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू वी आर सर्टेन टाइप ऑफ क्लोथ एनी मेन हु वांट टू स्पीक अप बॉयज वाइस और साइलेंस लड़कों को कुछ नहीं दिमाग में आता लोग क्या कहेंगे हाउ हाउ आर मेन टॉट दिस थिंग anybody who wants to quickly speak up we also need to go on time yeah see gender is not just about women right gender is an equal women agar women pe restrictions hoti hai men pe bhi restrictions hoti hai men bhi bahut sari cheeze nahi kar sakte kyunki wo men hai actually dandita uh, and shiv this is a women's college so most of the audience is women <laughs> only so that's why you are getting a very female related uh, answers only गुड जॉब हाई पेइंग जॉब लोग क्या कहेंगे तुम अपनी फैमिली कैसे संभालोगे शादी कैसे होगी तुम्हारी अगर तुम नहीं कमा सकते तो Right, so again, that kind of thing. If you're not, it becomes reverse. For women, it'll be of course like, "Tum roti ek goal nahi bhel sakti." Log kya kahenge? Whereas for men, it becomes about, "Oh, you can't even earn from your fa- from your family," which is where we also see how these expectations are different for men and women, but clearly in relationship to each other. Right? Madhu has written. Uh, Madhu has written in the chat box. "Ghar mein karna hi kya hota hai?" I think she can't speak of. Yeah. While unmuting herself, so she has written in chat box. No, that's a, that's great, Madhu, right? And that's also like another stereotype for men. कि अगर लड़का एक उम्र के बाद घर पे बहुत time तक बैठा है, तो लोग क्या कहेंगे? तुम क्या कर रहे हो घर पे? घर जमाई बन गए हो और whatever, right? Even in even after marriage, there are these stereotypes that men shouldn't be idle. They should always be working. They should always be productive. They should always be in action. Sitting idle men are a bad thing, right? They are more like a woman, womanly men in that sense. So that's right. Nandita, should we move on? Yeah, Mia. So great. Mm-hmm. We have an interesting more set of pictures here that I want you all to look at and think about. And you know, just tell me what do you see here? What are these different pictures? what are they representing what kind of masculinity do you think they represent they are talking about if anybody wants to say something about this quickly i mean we have already so far talked about how society tells us that this is how men and women should be so let's think about that picture reflects the strength of men great jashi do you want to say more in what picture so there i think you, we all know the names devana namita govinda ritik ranveer singh so where do you see strength do you see that equally through all pictures or is there a difference
Anybody else who wants to say, I don't want to put Jashri on spot completely? Um, men showing their body indicates how strong they are. Mm-hmm. Like the story. Right. Uh, but if a woman displays her body, it's always shamed. Like, why is she yeah. wearing so short clothes or why is she showing herself? Right. While That's a very important. Yeah, while men do it, it's praised. It's like how how good it is. But if women do it, yeah, it's. Shameful. That's a very good point, right? So we clearly see even how we perceive the body of people is a very gendered thing. So men can expose certain parts of their body very freely, whereas women can't sort of wear certain clothes at all times, right? But what else? Do you also see that with, let's say, Devanand, Amitabh, Govinda? What, what are you seeing here in terms of comparison between different actors and how we think about these different actors? Let, uh, Nandita, can we go to the next slide while people are still thinking? So I'll give them a food for thought. So let's say, and as clearly I think you pointed out, we see with Rithik and we this idea of a bodybuilder man coming up, someone who shows strength, who has muscles, as we were talking about earlier. Then there is a different kind of a man that we used to think about in the 70s and 80s, right? With Amitabh Bachchan, this idea of angry young man. And then, of course, if we go back even further, we are thinking about, you know, more cutesy, cuddly, Romantic, nice, you know, handsome men called Devanand, Govinda, whatever. What I, what we're trying to see here is you'll see that gender roles, we talked about gender roles, right? But gender roles are not exactly constant. They constantly evolve over time, as Nandita was talking about. And this may be one, I, one way of seeing that, right? So when we think about what constitutes masculinity, what makes a man manly, at some point, maybe it was something like Devanand who had certain attributes, right? But now we go to the 70s and 80s, there is an Amitabh Bachchan kind of figure. Yes, you show more your anger, the more manly you are. So you have to perform your masculinity in a certain way. And then, of course, when we're talking about our present, there's another version of masculinity for us, which is men who have muscles. Clearly, Devanand or Govinda didn't have muscles, right? Does it mean they were less manly or whatever? What we're trying, what, what we're basically then seeing here is gender norms constantly change, and hence expectations of what would be appropriate masculinity or appropriate femininity also changes over time, right? So, uh, to go to the next slide, Nandita. Mm-hmm. So, and we all have so far been talking about this whole idea of lo kya kahenge, right? Which is how society governs or tells us how to behave like men and women. With, with, with what we're seeing here in terms of films, popular culture, culture too plays a big role in how we think about ourselves as men and women. So manliness, womanliness are not only shaped by people around us in the strict sense of, okay, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. So our teachers or our parents, everyone, even our friends telling us, are ye kya kar rahe, aise nahi karte this is very gay or this is very whatever, right? But also in in various other ways, even when we're not interacting with the people around us, we are learning gendered behaviors. We are learning them through films. And film is not always telling you, right, okay, behave like me. Yet we get an image in our head that, okay, this is how I should behave in order to behave like a proper man. This is how I should walk in order to walk like a proper woman. And all of this becomes a very sort of, Things we don't think about on a daily basis, but things that are informing our behavior through and through films, media, popular culture. And that that's something that, as we also said, also varies from time to time. Next slide. And I think I'm just going to skip over a few slides, Nandita. I'll just, if you could go to the next. Yeah, so just, um, we wanted to go in more details, but just to think about how Histori- it's also a very historical phenomena, how we think about gender, right? So again, like now we see different representations of women in film all the time. But again, you go back a few years, you see, for instance, this film, Pura Ban Paschim, which was released, I think, in the 70s. I'm forgetting the exact year. 
but you clearly see in such films and this keeps coming up time and time and again that there is a clear idea of okay this is a bad woman a woman who smokes who wears certain kinds of clothes or whatever whereas a good woman is finally a woman who can also you know be very religious who can wear certain kind of clothes etc etc and any deviation from that is sort of bad so how again culture even films through their explicit narrative create a binary between good woman bad woman good man bad man etc etc and again this is a very historical phenomena too in terms of you know how at some point we thought west was you know exerting too much influence on indian culture hence this idea of bad woman who behaves too much like a western woman versus a good woman who is truly indian and again you know how those norms might shift today where you know we have a lot more of a global culture so there are there is there is different way of looking at what is a good woman a bad woman and we can i think skip the next slide to nandita and go to your section okay so so you know just to kind of give a bit of context to it when we were saying that it's not when we it's just assumed you know that when we are talking about gender we are talking about women we are talking about women's rights well, we are talking about women's rights but but gender roles do not only oppress women they also oppress men right because it's it's as much as it is hard to be a woman it's also hard to be a man because society always tells you there are things you can do there are things you cannot do and which is why a more productive way of looking at these things of looking at our society is not to talk about individuals but to talk about systems and patriarchy which is which literally means the rule of the father pitra satta jise bolte hain so we all live in a patriarchal society and it's important to think about what that means so here is a quick 2 minute video that we'll watch which in which a professor actually sums it up very nicely what patriarchy means and what it means to live in a patriarchal society uh oh okay so i cannot play video in this format oh double click it nandita i think it should come on if you try to no i think it shows it as a picture not as a video do you want to do the full screen thing like present slide show and then try it yeah let me try that you don't see anything right yeah <laughs> okay uh i'll quickly just share i think uh, you can copy and paste the youtube link in your browser because i can see when you are scrolling over the youtube link below it yeah you can open it in your browser yeah or you know what i'll do is let me just open and just share do you want me to try doing this you can turn off your screen share and i can quickly try yeah it. that would be great if you just uh, yeah can find this video yeah wait मैम आई थिंक राइट क्लिक करेंगे तो फिर वो वीडियो प्ले का ऑप्शन आता है वो हो जाएगा अभी पिक्चर फॉर्मेट में इंसर्ट हो रखा है अच्छा राइट क्लिक करेंगे नहीं राइट क्लिक में भी कोई ऑप्शन नहीं आ रहा है सो ट्राई स्टॉप शेयरिंग योर स्क्रीन एंड आई विल ट्राई टू यू फाउंड द वीडियो यस एंड आई एम डूइंग इट फ्रॉम द पीपीटी ओनली आई थिंक आई एम ओके ओके ग्रेट Can you all see it? No, you haven't shared your screen. No, okay. You all, you all can see it. Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. Patriarchy is a word that scholars, and in particular feminist scholars, use to describe the ways that the world is organized by ideas about. Something happened. 
I'll just play it again. Patriarchy, Patriarchy is, a, is word a word that, that scholars, scholars and in particular, particular feminist scholars use to describe the ways that the world is organized by ideas about gender, gender. and in and particular ideas about men and women. Um, patriarchy, patriarchy says, says that, that men should be in charge and women should follow along and do what men want to do. And so the, there are lots of ways that patriarchy shapes our lives. I think the one of the most clear examples of patriarchy is kind of the idea of the family or the idea of the marriage. And so inside the word patriarchy is the Latin root pater, which means father. And in a patriarchal family, the father is at the top of the family structure. So the father's in charge. Maybe the mother's up there, but she's kind of following along. And then the kids are down below. And so that kind of structure might get replicated in lots and lots of other institutions. So if the little family, single unit of the family is patriarchal with the dad on top and the mom underneath kind of following along, then a patriarchal institution that's not the family would look the same way. So um, a patriarchal government structure would say the men should lead and the women should follow along. When the late 18th century, when the United States was founded, we had a patriarchal government structure because women couldn't vote. So the men could lead, the men could tell the women what to do, and the women had no voice. They couldn't vote. They couldn't. They had no choice, really, but to follow along. Um, other structures like that. Um, might, uh, might be, be like, like businesses, businesses or, or work, work environments in which the men are the bosses, bosses and the women are fulfilling other, other kinds of duties that are also important but are not valued as highly. So, so we, we sometimes, sometimes see patriarchy through the structure, through the structure itself, and sometimes we see patriarchy through the kinds of practices that happen in the place. So, so you might see a situation in which it seems from the outside like the men and the women all have the similar kinds of jobs and similar amounts of power in the space. But if the men actually get to do whatever they want um, and the women kind of have to tolerate bad behavior or um, tolerate being called names or things like that, then even though it looks from the outside like everything's hunky-dory, actually it's a patriarchal structure because um, the men still have more power than the women. If you stop sharing your screen, I'll share my screen again. Okay. All right. So what we just saw was a very simple definition of patriarchy. Like, as I said, we live in a patriarchal society where, which means in the family, the father is always the head of the household. And that structure is kind of replicated or is copied in whatever institution that we are part of. The family, religion, politics, workplace, society. And Basically, patriarchy, like the system, leads to gender inequality. It leads to women having lesser rights than men. And one of the examples that actually is so commonplace that it's very often we ignore it, we take it for granted, is the power relations in the household, the way power work works in all our families. And the most stark representation of it is housework. Who does the housework, right? So I was just looking at some data, and in India, according to OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, they did a survey in 2019, that was two years ago, and they found that women spent 577% more time in a day. I mean, that's a, that's a mind-boggling number. 577% more time in a day on household work than men. What does that mean? So... You know, we are so kind of primed to think of labor as paid labor. Ki kaam kaun karta hai, jo bahar ja ke kaam karta hai, jo office mein nokri karta hai, wo kaam karta hai. Jo ghar mein rehta hai, wo kya kaam? Ghar mein karna hi kya hota hai, jaise kisi ne bola, right? To ghar ka jo kaam hai, which is such a major portion of actual work, actual labor, it just gets invisibilized, right? It's invisible. Nobody sees it, so it doesn't exist. We all pretend it doesn't exist. 
But if you see the work that is at home that goes into reproducing the family so that the family is ready every day to go to, the kids can go to school, the man or also the women, woman can go to office. What enables it? There is a lot of work that goes behind it, which is cooking, cleaning, child care. If you live in rural areas, it could also be fetching water and firewood. We know that in villages, women spend close to five to six hours every day just fetching water for their families. Do we talk enough about that work? No, because we tend to think that real work is the work for which one gets a salary, right? But because it's seen as women's job, what they do at home, what does that mean? It means that the time that women spend doing housework is the time that they spend not getting an education. It is the time that they spend not being in formal employment. Because there are so many women who, especially we see in our society after having kids, find it impossible to go back to work. So because, you know, they are doing the work of childcare, they're doing the work of raising the next generation, it means they cannot do formal labor for which they can be paid. And especially this burden is felt by poor women. Because if you are rich, if you belong to a certain social class, you can get somebody else to do the housework for you, right? You can hire domestic help, you can pay someone. But what happens to poor women who cannot afford to hire somebody else to do the job? It means they are the ones who are staying out of education, who are staying out of formal employment. And, you know, like, you will hear that Congress party has announced in the UP that 40% seats, 40% tickets will be given to women. That's all great. But the question would be, do women have the time to become like full-time political leaders? Why are women so much in politics? Because who has time? If you have to do a lot of time, you should have time to become a full-time politician or a full-time politician or a full-time in your social or political life to become a prominent figure. So you don't have time to become a woman, right? Because that time goes in doing the household work. which is often so invisible. Nobody even thanks you for it. Nobody thinks that it's a real job. And just to, just to quickly add there, going back to the conversation we were having earlier, that is being a woman a natural thing, something that comes naturally or biologically or being a man a natural thing. This is again one of that examples. Often people say that it's a girl. लड़कियों का नेचर ही ऐसा होता है कि वो टीचिंग करना चाहती हैं वो भी स्कूल टीचर ठीक है आधा दिन का जॉब खाली and now you see that's also a choice that's put on the women by the society why because they have so much other domestic chores to do that they would choose they might tend to choose jobs which are not very you know which won't take them 9 hours outside of the home so just thinking about how even choices the things that we think we are choosing ourselves are decided by this overall structure of the society where women are expected to spend so much time in the home doing household duties that of course they cannot become a consultant be in a business position where they have to spend 9 to 10 hours in an office yeah so this is a still from a recent malayalam film called the great indian kitchen i would really recommend agar aapne nahi dekhi hai to aap dekhe i mean it talks about It's basically the story of this woman who has to, after marriage, spend her whole life in the kitchen and what it does to her. So, yeah. Okay. So, time for you all to think a bit. So, I don't know if you heard about this, but in 2020, Kamal Hassan, who is an actor, he launched a political party of his own in Tamil Nadu. And one of the promises that his political party made was that they would pay women for housework. So they, there would be something like, you know, women would be paid 5,000 or 6,000 a month just for being homemakers. So it might seem like a revolutionary idea, might seem like a very bad idea. What do you think? Should women, should housewives be paid for, be paid salaries for household work? Ma'am, I think it would be a revolutionary idea. Housewives should be paid wages for household chores. Okay, Sakshi, why why do you think? What what will that do? 
मैम वो भी तो एक काम ही होता है उसमें भी मेहनत लगती है ऐसा तो नहीं है कि जैसे बाकी जैसे लोग काम करते हैं बाकी जैसे मेल पर्सन काम करता है तो वो ही काम नहीं होता जैसे फीमेल पर्सन जो काम करती है घर में वो भी तो काम होता है उसमें भी मेहनत लगती है उसमें भी हार्ड वर्क उसमें भी ब्रेन पावर यूज होती है आई थिंक इसलिए पेड़ तो करना चाहिए ओके थैंक यू साक्षी लोग अग्री करेंगे साक्षी के साथ या डिसएग्री करेंगे Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. I will. I'm. I'm agree with it. I think it doesn't has any problem to uh pay women for the work they do at home and uh, indirectly, ma'am, they are uh also helping uh by doing household work in in order to promote the economy or in in the growth of the economy of the country. Not directly, but indirectly, they are doing so. If they are uh giving their physical labor in the house so men are going outside the house and doing other other things which are helping the uh, which are help, helping the country in the economic growth so indirectly they are also helping so they should be i think they it it would be a great idea to pay them for the household work uh, ma'am ma can i speak <laughs> uh yes uh, my name is shubhankar yes yeah uh sorry ma'am i am in the crowd uh, that's why uh, there is some hustle there uh, but i want to say that if we see india or most of the uh, western country also in today's world we are uh, moving from a uh, full legit patriarchal society to somewhat a feminist or a mixed society in which uh, we can see that the women are also uh, working uh, uh as, as in the corporate house and uh, in many government offices also uh, not uh, their percentage are less i agree with that but they are now working and men and women both if uh, we talk about the partners male partner and female partner they both are working in the house so in that way we can say that uh, male partner should be also uh, paid for the work they are doing in the house also I think Shubankar has raised a great point. I mean, of course, we see that increasingly more and more women are now also working outside the house, which are which is they are employed in formal sectors. They are getting, they are bringing home salaries. But then the question I would ask is: Are men stepping up at home? Like women are now carrying the double burden. They are working outside. They are also working inside. But are men stepping up to? take equal partnership of household chores uh, ma'am i want to answer this question uh, actually uh, month and a half uh, before i talk i was talking to my father and my mother that it will be good if i get a working woman and i will stay in the house so my father and mother said even my sister said that uh, no girl will marry them they want a work working husband if they are working too so that's the problem uh, in uh, which we are getting in this society thank you shubankar for sharing that and i think that very clearly ties into what we have been talking about right that patriarchy doesn't only oppress women it equally oppresses men because as a man you simply cannot say ki bhai ab chalo mujhe to thoda break chahiye life mein kuch nahi karna mujhe yeah no one yeah. is going to accept that and again the stereotype we were talking about that men's position is always they should be working people they should always be earning a salary that's an available the 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 counterpart of housewife is usually not available to men can you be a house husband for instance right and that's simply just by pure observation we can see is not so common in societies so that says something and which is which is where i wanted to add nandita that and there's another comment in the chat box which is again it you know there are no home make home make i'll just read it out home makers work is invaluable cannot be compared to anything else there are no fixed working hours no benefits no holidays so it cannot be reduced to something as simple as a job that has a salary which is a fair point but i think the larger point here is who is seen as an economic agent right when we think about patriarchy and we said that patriarchy fundamentally is defined by head of the household who is usually a man who is who's also usually who earns for the rest of the family 
that's why as we said that it's more much more common to see housewives than to see house husbands at least in middle classes for instance right when we think about other social class things might change a little bit because we all know for instance in farmers families women also go out work on the farms etc cetera, etc cetera. but the question here becomes is that if in a family unit let's say man is the one who's earning the income and woman is seen just as a housewife she is not seen as an economic agent contributing to the economy of the family in the entirety right she is always reduced to this idea of are wo thoda kuch kaam karti hai and that's why this idea wo kaam bhi nahi karti but phir bhi paise mangti rehti hai kharchti rehti hai and that's that becomes a problem where you don't see women's domestic labor as something that is fundamentally important to how a family earns money for its sustenance why because that's what is feeding all the children that's what is feeding the man to go out and do the work that they're doing and that's what is important in this idea that we start seeing all work as tied to economic agency and hence even someone like a housewife being an economic agent in a family and not simply you know just doing support work not doing actual earning for the family or something like that and i think it's very important to um Hello. Let me just quickly make a point. So I think, again, not to be misunderstood, that the whole point of these slides was to say that women do as much, women contribute as much economically, even when they don't work in formal employment. That is not to be misunderstood as us saying that housework is women's work. right there's nothing natural about housework that it, that makes it that makes it more suitable to women like we would not say that women are naturally you know more caring more selfless more sacrificial men can also do exactly the same things right it's just that men are actively discouraged from owning these traits yeah so i think just to sum up this part because we're also need in the interest of time the whole point here and there is no right or wrong clear answer here but this reflection exercise for us was a moment just to think about what is considered as proper work what is considered as being the head of the family as someone who's earning from the family etc etc so it's not really about whether we agree that they should be paid or not but to recognize that women are also economic agents even when they're actually not working outside the house because what sustains the family unit in itself there is a lot of work that goes unnoticed the domestic labor that women and men of course also perform so I'll, i also want to recognize from shubha shubhankar's comment that thankfully that suggests maybe things are changing for us maybe yeah. men and women are able to figure out with each other okay we are both going to participate equally in domestic work etc yeah. etc So definitely to say that things also should be changing and are changing definitely for good. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of time, Shreya, I'll just move on to your next slide. Yeah. Great. So I think we've talked about a lot of things here, and just as we were discussing this question of labor, many things came up, and this is this is going to be the last part of our discussion, which is is gender the complete story? Uh, even how we experience the society, the world as men and women is it only about gender can that explain how women experience oppression or how men experience oppression inequality etc so i'm going to refer to this concept called intersectionality it's um, it was developed by dr kimberly crenshaw who is an american lawyer a civil rights activist a feminist um, women's rights proponent and in 1989 she talked about this idea of intersectionality and you know so she says i'll just read out first consider an analogy to traffic in an intersection coming and going in all directions discrimination like traffic through an intersection may flow in one direction and it may flow in other direction if an accident happens in an intersection it can be caused by cars traveling from any number of directions and sometimes from all of them right and we'll just in the next slide try to see what this actually means but basically what this theory suggests is that our social and everyday cultural experience of inequality is informed by multiple vectors of identity 
so even when let's say you are not you know you go and apply for a job and some for whatever reason the employer refuses you that you know whatever you you are not proper for this job so it may not always be because of your gender why that might have might be happening it might have to do with the class with the caste with the religion with the age etc 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 so if you go to the next slide nandita yeah what this means is that whenever we think of ourselves as men and women we are not simply just men or women we are men we are we are a man or a woman belonging to a specific ca- class caste or religion etc so what that means is a person's experience of oppression a person's experience of discrimination is always informed at the intersection of these various things so how for instance a hindu woman's experience might be very different from a muslim woman's experience how let's say a fully able bodied man's experience might be completely different from let's say someone who has a disability similarly how an older woman's experience might be completely different from a younger woman's experience you know so things like that how at all times even the experience of gender inequality is actually specific to experience of other identities other group collective belongings etc etc so if you go to the next slide so that we can actually think about an example which will make this clear and i guess like this might be more uh, more relevant to students coming from different parts in delhi to study at du also but for instance again what does it mean so a woman for instance may experience discrimination or even violence not just because she is a woman but she is a woman belonging to specific area in the country so for instance a lot of studies have shown that it is much harder for women from the north east to find places to rent in delhi right so here what's happening it's not simply and many of you might think about okay so for instance some people don't want to give houses for rent to unmarried women because of whatever social stereotypes that they have about unmarried women but also here what becomes specific is that she is a woman who's unmarried and who's from northeast so there might be a lot of different ideas okay what kind of food do you eat what kind of things you do in your house that are then informing a tenant for instance refusing to give a place for rent to a woman feeling from the north east so hence when we're thinking about the experience of inequality we must always ask that how is that inequality actually being informed by for instance your class position so again for instance someone from a middle class may not experience certain kind of inequalities that a person from the lower caste or lower class might experience them or person with different ethnicity you know again we all know the stereotype of uh, kali ladkiyan aur gori ladkiyan and again gori ladkiyan is more preferable somehow so again that's not simply your gender speaking there but as we know that you know for instance the color of south like of a particular ethnicity say people belonging from the south is seen very differently from people belonging in the north who have a particular color of the skin so go to the next slide then so again just to think about some examples from the indian context concrete examples of how we are thinking about intersectionality how we are thinking about gender in tandem with for instance class again as well, as I, as we were just talking about who gets hired for certain kinds of jobs so we know again like when women are encouraged to do certain kind of jobs what kind of jobs are respectable for them to do so there is sometimes a clearly this idea okay a good woman which is often a middle class woman should not do a call center job or it's a bad kind of job to do right so then the idea of respectable femininity or a respectable woman gets attached to certain kind of professions which hence is attached to certain class of people who are educated at a particular level who understand for instance who are more fluent in english versus some other languages etc beyond this even one of the biggest things where we can think about gender which is the idea of marriage also as you know is restricted along the lines of class caste religion and you know as we know matrimonial advertisements if anybody's ever seen them 
has very clear ideas of okay we want a brahmin this and that fair beautiful very loyal so all of these various terms that you can actually see on the slide in this advertisement so this very idea for instance of a fair beautiful wife which is desired by this person and we might ask so for instance someone who has a darker skin is she automatically less desirable is she automatically less marriageable so quote and quote right and again we can think about even the cultural stereotypes of fair and lovely women right and women often having to put on a lot of makeup in their marriages so as to present to the society that they are fair and beautiful hence when we thinking about these ideas even in terms of marriage you are bound by your caste identity you are bound by the color of your skin you are bound by what class do you belong to etc 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 Nandita, this you... ad shiv is particularly very hilarious because the guy apparently is unemployed presently yeah. not working but looking for a brahmin bharatwaj fair beautiful very loyal very trustworthy loving caring brave powerful rich extremely patriotic to india <laughs> but compassionate expert in child raising and excellent cook indian hindu brahmin girl from jharkhand or bihar Right. So a lot of the things that we have spoken about actually coming together in this one ad. Yeah, and as we were just actually speaking when we were speaking about domestic work, that yes, so one final line which we can at least see that that's great is they are wanting a working girl, right? Yet you see alongside that idea, she should be an expert in child raising, as we were just talking about, right? So it's women have that double burden often that they are not only working when they're, you know, feel seen as marriageable. but they still have to be experts in certain kind of domestic duties right but anyway so that's a that's a brilliant ad that way that you can see how various factors actually come into our experience of being a man or being a woman it's not simply actually gender but gender is always operating in tandem with class caste education ability disability age etc and obviously with matrimonials too that age idea has becomes very important right because some of women are not marriageable when they go beyond a certain age or something like that then again when we are thinking about intersectionality another way of thinking about is very through this crucial idea of honor and i would especially like to know how people think about this idea if somebody would be willing to talk about it but again this idea that the honor of the family the whole very constructed notion of honor is specifically attached to women's actions a woman shouldn't do this wouldn't as we were talking about earlier ladkiyon ko der raat tak bahar nahi rehna chahiye ye ghar ki izzat ka sawal hai right so even women's mobility and choices are curtailed in the name of family honor and we all know from our everyday experiences agar kuch galat bhi ho jata hai let's say if a woman experiences sexual assault the problem isn't the assault itself the problem becomes the honor of the family has been taken away right so this see and then again serious problem of honor killing that we all hear about in the society all the time we see of course honor this idea is something that impacts us as men and women very in very important ways and yet if we need to think about this through the lens of intersectionality we can see that the idea of honor is inseparable cannot be thought of without thinking about dynamics of caste so again like in fact somebody marries out outside of their caste suddenly it becomes a question of family honor if somebody marries outside of their religion interfaith marriages and stuff suddenly it becomes a question of honor if some if a north indian woman we all know the the famous film two states and stuff like that so somebody out a north indian man outside a south indian woman or a south indian woman outside uh, marries a south indian sorry north indian man again it becomes a question of honor so again when we are thinking about honor as a specifically gendered experience even there these elements of caste class religion region ethnicity come into play with each other and that's what it means to think intersectionally that you're not thinking thinking about gender in isolation but you're thinking about gender of a person belonging to a specific class of a person belonging to a specific religion etc and just to add to that a bit shiv like gen uh, intersectionality also helps us complicate things a bit right like if you think of a super rich family in 
living in Noida or Gurgaon, who have as their servant, so to say, a lower class, a working class man. So then, how do you understand? Because if we have to just look at patriarchy, then we say, okay, every man is has to be more powerful than a woman, right? But then, when you look at say working class men who work as servants, as uh, rich families, then you see that it's not only gender that decides who is more powerful. Gender is complicated by other factors, as Shiva has been saying. Gender is complicated by class. Gender is complicated by caste. So we don't we can't think of equality and inequality in society in terms of only gender. That is the whole point, right? Like gender is intermeshed with so many other things in order to make sense of inequality. So I think we should stop here. Nearly there are a couple of slides of conclusion, but I think before that, maybe if somebody just wants to say what you're thinking, what are your comments on all of this. If you have any question, we'd love to hear that at this point before we conclude the session for today. So, any questions, any queries, any comments from your own experiences that you would like to share with everyone? Uh, so, I would like to put something. Uh, while you were talking about the the advertisement which was related with the marital relationship between the two people, then uh, an idea comes to my mind, which is that he. This uh, patriarchal notion doesn't only uh, discriminate the women, or only discriminate the men as well. It is well known fact. But the fact is, ki, what happens most of the time that uh, when it comes to uh, getting married, the two people, to what happens? Ki, uh, it it will work. Ki, a woman is uh, less educated, then she can get married with a highly educated guy. But when it comes to a girl, to it 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 rarely happens, or even it's my personal experience. I've never seen it in my life. Ki ek highly educated ladki ne ek less educated ladki se shaadi kiya ho, and it is also seen in the physical terms. A man must be taller than the girl. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in in the whether it is in terms of uh, physical strength or in terms of educational qualification, so. It also discriminate the men as well, but yeah. the, it is a very well fact which comes to my mind. I thought I thought I thought that I I should share it with you and yeah. With you. Thank you, Richa, and that's a very important point as well. We all have heard that kind of idea. अरे ज़्यादा पढ़ लिखना भी अच्छा नहीं होता लड़कियों के लिए रहे इसके लिए शादी नहीं मिलेगा लड़का कैसे मिलेगा टाइम? So again, the, again, and as we were thinking about, which is why even when we're thinking about gender. Education plays a very important role, even in like how gender relations work with each other. So that that's a very important example. And of course, things might be changing. Maybe we are now more open to having educated women marry men and stuff. But also just thinking historically, how things were versus how things might be changing for better now. Uh, Ma'am, I would like to put a question. Uh, the question is that ki, if a, a highly educated guy can marry with a less educated girl, so why can't the less educated girl get married with a highly educated guy? My question is this. I would like to put. Uh, sir, can I answer this question? It's uh, sir, uh, if you uh, grant yeah. me one. Sir, uh, we can say that patriarchism, uh, uh, the way uh, its dominance is there in our society today, uh, it has been uh, general. We can say that uh, it has been in, in Gramsci's world. We can say that uh, it has a, its hegemony. It has uh, made his hegemony in our society, and it has been naturalized. The patriarchal system has been naturalized. If we uh, talk to our uh, grandparents. Uh, even I have talked to my grandparents, and yeah. I said to my grandmom, "Why you are doing pallu nowadays? It's of no relevance in the city." Then she she was uncomfortable with that. She was uh, because uh, the patriarchy system has made these things even naturalized to the people, and that's the reason why uh, people are not uh, want to marry a woman who is uh, more uh, earning than him. So it can be the answer. No, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say it's it's uh, it's very crucial, Shubankar, that you use the word naturalize because I think the whole point of this session is to show that there's nothing natural about these systems. 
Yeah, yeah, of course, ma'am. It is not uh, natural about the system, but uh, uh, when we see the Gramsci's hegemony, the concept of hegemony, he says that not, none of the uh, ideology is natural, but uh, the political power or the culture make it naturalized to the people. So every people think that is a, it is a natural thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's very true. But what I'm saying is that the first step towards wanting to change something is to acknowledge that it's not natural. That if something is constructed by the society, it can equally be dismantled or be changed by the society. So this is why I think we, we have been discussing how there's nothing natural about these things, right? So we can try to think about then how to bring about change. Yeah. And just to also quickly add to that, Shubanka, because what you said is very crucial for our overall discussion that these are not simply external impositions on us. Gender is not simply, okay, there is a law produced by the society and everybody has to follow it. Gender is, and that's why it has such power, that it's internalized by people themselves. Yes, society has constructed these norms, ideas, but sadly what happens through upbringing, through socialization, as Nandita was explaining, that we internalize these norms. We think, in fact, that's why suddenly when say, oh, a woman should totally be able to like, you know, go on bikes everywhere. Even women shudder at that thought. And even women would say, oh, that shouldn't, women shouldn't do this. Why? Because even both men and women also internalize the idea of what it means to be a good woman and a bad woman, good man and a bad man. So I think that's also important to keep in mind that we are all in this and hence we all need to actively think about, as Nandita was saying, denaturalize in order to be able to make social change. Yeah. I think we only have five minutes, so any comments, any questions? Can I, can I say something? Yes, yes. please. So first of all, thank you. Both of you, the, both of you have done such a wonderful work. I think a lot of homework and a lot of planning in uh, having executed this webinar and very nicely done. I mean, I really appreciate at uh, generally at young age, uh, all speakers are not able to see the depth of these issues as clearly as both of you have already uh, shown through the, the webinar. And that's really commendable. Applause to you and congratulations to you both. You see, I joined some 10 minutes late and what exactly was I doing? I was trying to convince the parents of a girl who passed out some years ago from our college as, ba as back as 2015. And I was for 45 to 50 minutes convincing her parents, especially her mother, to let her do her PhD. And I'm mm -hmm. just speaking it out now. So I joined late. And, you know, and I was uh, uh, thinking on uh, to my own self that your entire webinar is nothing else but what I had been experiencing for the past 45 minutes, trying to convince how the patriarchal society completely grips over a child does not let that individual girl live as a human being. So what is important, I mean, uh, wh what I want to convey to uh, you as well as the other students who joined it is that do not confuse yourself between a gender and a human being. You are a human being and you have a gender. The problem is the identification of the human being too much with the gender overpowers the self. And the girl is pleading, I want to live my life of a studying person. I do not want to marry. And exactly it was the same thing as you all saying that the patriarchal society is gripping her. No, you are 26 and now you must get married. You must raise a child and so on. So it is important for these, uh, these, these students of our college who have joined and listened to your wonderful webinar to not to identify too much about themselves with the gender of a girl because you are first of all a human being. And it is very, very difficult. I think it will be another 50, 60 years before we can really come out of uh, all the patriarchal or whatever society, culture, etc., which binds a person. The story does not change. My predecessor related to me the story of how difficult it was for her to pursue science. I face the same. And I see here the same 25 years later. So around 55 to 60 years, the story does not change. Only the people change of how difficult it is for people amongst in our country to, you know, to get out of this patriarchal system and not to identify themselves with the girl roles uh, that is, you know, imposed upon that. Don't sit like this. Don't dress like that. Don't do this and don't, don't do that. And what a very important point which you mentioned is that 
we are generally calculating the gdp of gdp of our country according to the standards of the west but the gdp also should include the work that the women do as a housewife or as a homemaker inside the house if she is teaching her child or if she is doing anything for the house she is actually contributing to the gdp in one way or the other but this concept just does not uh, just does not come to anybody's mind and that is very nicely uh, taken up by you so i'll not take more time congratulations to you both uh, very well done and uh, keep it up yeah thank, thank you. you thank you thank you very thank much. You so much ma'am um i just want to again like reinforce what you also said but something that we need to think about and it's a very very famous feminist slogan as well one is not born a woman but becomes a woman right and that's what we began this whole discussion with that as people we are not born man or woman we are socialized by the society to become constantly keep becoming men and women and that's something we need to always think about whenever we're thinking about our lives nandita do you wanna yeah also i think what you said about human aspirations i think that really struck a chord because that is why gender inequality is primarily a human rights issue right because it basically stops us as human beings from fulfilling our potential from even being able to dream from being able to realize our dreams because then we are put into these boxes of what we are supposed to do expected to do by the society the wonderful part of your webinar is that you are you have got a male person and a female person speaking the same thing it is generally when we are talking about feminism or any change in the society women are teaching women that but that's not enough women have to also make the men counterparts understand what are the difficulties that a woman undergoes in order to live a normal life the the entire struggle is just to have a normal life not even an extraordinary one so it is necessary that women who will prospectively become mothers and will have children who will be male members should know how to treat their children how to make them grow up how to be uh, make them you know gender sensitive to realize the needs of a woman also so it is necessary that men are involved in these uh, discussions and not just women speaking to women women understand that it becomes a, sta- a story of you know wailing i'm uh, i'm in trouble you are in trouble let's share our troubles that doesn't change the system yeah. at all so thank, thank you, you once again wonderful work both of you thank you thank you so much nandita can we just quickly go through the slides we're out of time so we'll just put those slides let you all read it think about the concluding points but i think we've already done a very nice conclusion that you know it's a struggle for us all both men and women are a part of it and both men and women need to actively undo these kind of inequalities right and uh, just to go through these points some of them like there are various ways of expressing gender various ways of being a man or being a woman so we need to remember that these are the rules that are prescribed by the society but we can always react actively we can reformulate these rules and presents what we can be instead of boxing ourselves into any strict defined versions of men and women nandita do you want to add anything be- before we conclude no just one point that i think uh, ma'am also just said that you know i think we actively need to bring more men into the conversation because i think we often make the mistake you know of just thinking that gender and equality is a women's issue i mean yes women are historically the oppressed uh section but i think patriarchy we need to realize how patriarchy affects men too and we need to make more men a part of this conversation if things are indeed to change thank you so much thank you uh, all the organizers again for giving us this opportunity today thank you very much shivendra nandita i really congratulate your webinar was very interesting and uh, students really enjoyed it it was really thought provoking Thank you. Thank oh, you. and let's. I we really want to thank the But students. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much for participating actively, sharing your ideas and thoughts. We are very grateful for that. Okay. Thank you so much, Shiva Nandita, for such an informative, engrossing, and interactive workshop. Gender inequality is an issue that has been faced for a long time and will continue to be faced for a long time. it takes really decades to make small steps and slow improvements so these changes take so long because gender differences are instilled in us at such a younger age so once an idea is ingrained in us it is very hard to change that is why we need to discuss the presence of gender inequality in our world 
and how as young people we can make a difference with this i uh, thank you both uh, for uh, today for taking out time today and now i want to invite uh, dr rashmi manan uh, to close to give the formal end of vote of thanks i on behalf of physiton society uh, co convener physics society extend a hearty uh, vote of thanks to our guest mr shivdat sharma and miss nandita datta for enlightening us <laughs> on this important important topic my gratitude to both the speakers for gracing the occasion by sharing their opinions and making the session so interactive i'm immensely thankful to principal ma'am professor naina hasija for her encouragement and guidance to organize this event i'm thankful to dr seema gupta convener of visitor society for her rock solid support and encouragement to all of us i would like to extend my deepest sense of appreciation to dr savita sharma program coordinator for planning and conducting such an informative webinar for all the teachers and the students i'm thankful to dr tiranjita co convener physiton uh, society for her efforts efforts towards conducting and anchoring this webinar a big event cannot happen overnight this requires planning and a bird eye detail we have been fortunate enough to be backed by our office bearers of physiton society who are proactive and very dedicated to our society and college and a big thank you to each of our participants who took their valuable time to attend our seminar thank you thank you thank you very much thank you shivan nandita again thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am uh, ma'am can we have a group photograph if uh, all the participants can switch on their camera for a moment nandita yes. i request you to please stop presenting i think she i don't know if you left by mistake or i request everyone to please switch on the camera i think she was she was left i think Okay thank you so much Ek baar aur le lo Savita I think bahut sare bachcho ne baad mein aapke lene ke baad apna camera on kiya hai Yes ma'am yes ma'am Thank you thank you everyone Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you have joined just now. Uh, we took actually a group photograph. <laughs> uh, you are on mute, I think. I was saying it's okay, Jalo. ठीक है. Thank you. Okay, bye. okay. Thank you. Bye, bye. Ipsa, I think you can end the call now. Sorry, yes, I'm not seeing.